Hello, hi, my name is Dominique. I am a P project engineer at Facton um, and I look after the projects and modifications. Hello, my name is Sherlyn. I'm Filipino Chinese, originally from the Philippines, and I'm currently the plant manager for the Shell Gas Terminal in Bacton. Hello, my name is Mariam Amusa. I'm the production specialist at Bacton, and I'm originally from Nigeria. Hello, I'm Yoni. I am the technical safety engineer at Bacton, and I am originally from the Netherlands. Hi, I'm Olivia. I have worked at Shell for one and a half years. Um, I'm from Norfolk and I've lived in Norfolk my whole life. Uh, before this, I worked in childcare and I've recently moved to become a trainee instrument technician. And I'm doing my training here. Sounds good. Um, this is the first time I'm hearing about that, Olivia. So if you don't mind me asking, why the switch? Um, I started off taking a load of apprenticeships. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, I did some apprenticeships in the STEM field, but decided that I wanted to do childcare because I was a bit scared about the big leap. Um, I sort of wish I took it, but I'm glad that I have taken it now. Um, and it made me realize you can change career if you feel it necessary. Excellent. Um, for me, myself, I actually um, went to university to study chemical engineering, uh, which is what gives you the opportunity to become a process engineer. Um, in school, I liked all the typical science subjects like math, physics, chemistry, biology, and I was just looking for something, a, a career that I could use most of, if not all of the science subjects. And yeah, chemical engineering seemed to um, point in that direction and yeah it's been an interesting journey I've been doing my role now for about six months and I've been in the STEM career path for the last nine years anyone else would like to share their journey of what they're doing how long they've been doing it for yeah, I think uh, probably a similar interesting story as Olivia. I actually, uh, so I, my, my university degree was um, called management engineering. So it's very close to in other places, probably industrial engineering. Um, but I actually started my career in um, brand management. So I was working for a company called Procter & Gamble, but um, did, I would say by fate and by choice, <laughs> did a shift into the STEM industry, uh, particularly oil and gas and joining Shell. So I've been with, the, I'd say, in the industry and with the company for uh, for 15 years now. And uh, yeah, it's been, I think it has been a very worthwhile, I would say, shift. And it really went back to something I was very passionate about doing when I was back in college. It's really this whole interest around systems optimization, finding the sort of the best value um, and the most efficient way of doing things. And I think oil and gas has given a lot of opportunities for sort of that interest um, to, to be uh, sort of made, made use of. So um, Dom and Yoni, what were your own starts in your career in STEM? Yoni, do you want to, do you want to hit this first, Yoni? I'll take it. So just like uh, Mariam, I also studied chemical engineering, uh, which was um, interesting. It can, uh, it's very broad. You can go into many directions after that. But uh, as my, I actually ended up working for Shell, which was in the plan. And I'm very happy with that decision because you could go so many ways in it. So I started as a process engineer. And after four years of doing that, I became a production specialist, which is what Mariam is doing right now. Mm -hmm. And after doing that for about two and a half years, I went back into engineering and now I'm a tech safety engineer. So how did you get here, Dom? So <clears throat> I study, so I went to uh, 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 college and uni and I studied actually, um, my first uh, qualification is in business and finance. Um, however, I've never really, it's very interesting, but not interesting enough. And I really wanted to put some 
technical content to that course, something that I could actually apply knowledge to rather than it, I suppose, uh, uh, making decisions on just paperwork. So I wanted to actually see something real. Um, so I went and studied electrical and electronic engineering. So I, I decided to finish the one and move over and, and do the second. Um, I then um, worked for some local companies um, to gain some experience. Um, and then my career path took me um, to India and then to the States um, and Norway in between. Um, and I then um, had the opportunity to come and work for Shell, which is an opportunity I felt I couldn't really say no to. And then I'm working at Bacton as a PE. So that's that's the story, really. Nice. Very exciting thesis. Um, your STEM career is taking you to. Anyone else got exciting locations that their jobs or careers thrown them into? Yeah, maybe I can share a bit. <clears throat> Certainly an interesting ride for the past um, 15 years. I've done, uh, I actually started my career in Shell um, in, in a business which is called uh, more of a downstream business on, on lubricants. And now basically I'm part of the, um, what we typically call like an upstream chain where we look at um, sort of producing from our reservoirs and um, seeing how that um, <clears throat> essentially gets extracted into uh, what can be used for the, for the nation. So for instance, in, in Bacton, we essentially produce gas for uh, power and heating requirements feeding into the, into the grid. So many different sort of roles I've done and that has basically given me the opportunity to work in various locations. So one of my exciting times was uh, when I got a chance to actually work in South Africa, a very different location, very different culture. Um, also worked a couple of um, stints in the Netherlands, in the UK and other parts of Europe, and also did a couple of assignments in various parts of uh, Asia. My home country is included and others like uh, Singapore, for instance. So yeah, very, um, I would say the STEM career could really give um, us a lot of opportunities, not just in terms of various types of roles that could really grow and stretch us, but obviously various different countries where you could really immerse in different cultures and also make a difference um, in the local communities and also the local economy. Nice. Um... Olivia, what's your inspiration? Um, so you've mentioned that, you know, you were trying out these different STEM apprenticeships. What was your inspiration to come into STEM after your childcare and particularly to be a technician in, in oil and gas in Bacton? Uh, I think I've always been interested in maths and science, especially maths, uh, especially in high school. I really enjoyed going to maths lessons. Um, and I think that it inspired me to find a career where I could use that technically and work with other people who are like-minded as I am. Uh, and you find that a lot in this career, you find a lot of people who have the same interests as you because of how you learn, you tend to find that people that enjoy the same things as you go into similar careers. So everybody who I have met at Shell Baxin, I will always have a common interest with them because we all have are in the same field. Uh, how about you, Yoni? Ooh, uh, my inspiration must have been my dad. So my dad worked for Shell for about 37 years. And because of that, I uh, had the opportunity to grow up in many different places. So I've lived uh, abroad since I was about four years old. And you meet many interesting people, you learn many things about different cultures. And that's not just from living there, that's also from Shell being such a diverse company. So a lot of my dad's colleagues uh, introduced me to different cultures, which I find vastly interesting. So when I, uh, I said I wasn't planning on working for Shell because I wanted to start off with a smaller company, it was my goal to end up in Shell finally, and that's mainly because of these opportunities and the diversity in the workforce and having, being able to be exposed to that again, because it just, I think it's, it's a, that's just amazing, meeting all these people from 
different backgrounds, um, not just culturally, but also like you, Olivia and uh, Sherlyn, coming from different industries. It all comes together and we're all working on one goal. And that's just so amazing to see. What about you? Think, uh, go on. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think that's one of the things that attracted me to um, engineering is that you could, even if you go in to study one thing with engineering, it doesn't mean that's what you do for life. Like it op it's almost like an opener to many more opportunities. Like I had course mates that studied engineering and ended up working at the bank, uh, working in the food industry. Many of them also ended up in oil and gas. And even now in oil and gas, it doesn't mean you do one job for the rest of your life. Um, like for myself, I've been with the company nine years and I've done, I've had like five different roles in that nine years, um, some technical, some non-technical. And these are all parts of what makes the job and the whole STEM value even more interesting because you keep reinventing yourself, you keep learning new things. Um, so yeah, I, I find that very, I think that's the fun part of being in STEM. Um, for you guys, what would you say has been the most exciting thing? Like you were to pick one thing about your career so far or even your journey in your STEM life, <laughs> so to speak. What would you say has been the most fun thing for you? Uh, I would have to say that it's been working through lockdown. I turned up on the first day of lockdown and I was at work and I think that's pretty amazing. You don't have many jobs that, you know, offer frontline work um, and working with people. The community at Baxton is amazing. You have amazing family. It is like a family experience and being able to work through lockdown is, you feel fulfilled. Um, how about you, Shannon? Yeah, I think it's a very nice reflection. It, it's probably from, from what you just said, right? If I take the experience of this lockdown and we say Bacton is one of those critical industries that need to continuously safely produce because the households, the hospitals, <laughs> and the industries do depend on Bacton for keeping the lights on, keeping the critical energy <clears throat> in place, and now keeping the heating on during, uh, during winter. So as you said, it's it's really um, connecting back to a real sense of purpose, which makes your work really meaningful. So I think across, <clears throat> excuse me, across the field in STEM, and even with my personal experience in Shell, it's being it, it's knowing that the job that that you do is not just a task, but it has a very real, I would say, connection to how it makes people's lives better and how it actually helps grow the economy. And I, I guess if we look at also what, what are the changing, uh, what's the changing context with regard to where we play in, the, the whole um, space around making cleaner energy and influencing the climate is one where the field of STEM and the industry of oil and gas could actually make a significant difference. And I think it's, it's really this evergreen kind of opportunities where you say there is just many different sort of paths you can take to be able to really create an impact to not just your yourself and, and family and, and have a sense of fulfillment, but it's really about knowing that you've impacted a broader set of people, the economy of the country and sort of the communities that you um, operate in. How about yourselves, Dom? Um, I think, yeah, I think for me, I think there's a there's a, a number of a number of factors there which sort of give me the drive to do. Um, I think, as I sort of said um, earlier, um, changing from business to finance into engineering was something that I was going to do probably from a very early age, um, and I, and I think that that gives me drive. I want to see things actually work. Um, I want to see, I want to leave something behind, um, something that has a positive. Uh, I think also too, I think it's the people that you work with. And going back to what Olivia said before, I think I've been very privileged in my career to have met the people that I've met. Um, I think uh, uh, back to them as well too, Olivia, I agree with you. I've been lucky enough to work for two lady PUMs, which is something that, many many years ago you would not have really seen um, um and and 
both which you can sort of that gives you somebody to inspire to be more like okay so I, I think that's that for me is a is a is a big thing but really it's it's what we leave behind yeah and how we move forward technology changes um I just what can I say I just enjoy what I do and I'm a big fan of what I do and and the rest of the ladies and the chaps that do it so yeah what has any of you encountered something challenging like that you can go oh my god I'm either scared or nervous or oh what have I gotten myself into <laughs> and how do you deal with it <laughs> <clears throat> okay so okay, I'll, I'll, you go on go. Go on my, so i think i think every day is a learning day so i think you will probably learn something new every day um and it's a very good thing but when you open when you open something up it's new at first it's quite scary um, and then as you progress, then you understand it and you're like, oh, OK. So I would say in differing levels, probably every day, um, you know, as I said, you learn something. And when you first look at it, you won't understand it. And it's your determination that drives you. So, yeah. Yeah, no, and that, that's that's very true. And that resonates with me. <clears throat> for me, one of the memorable moments for myself in my time in Shell was um, when as a graduate, I had to like help them remove a bomb from a pipeline. Um, and that's not something you expect to do six months into starting a job where you're just learning how to even use a modeling software. And then now you have to tell them how they're going to safely remove a bomb. But I ended up doing it. But the first few days when I was given the task, I was petrified to say the least because I was having nightmares. Oh my God, I'm going to calculate it wrong. Someone's going to die. The bomb is going to explode. The pipeline won't be able to provide gas for all of the UK. Um, but after a while, after talking through my peers, going to meet my mentor and my technical coach and kind of, kind of talk through it, it was most of the fear was in my head. There are many, many other barriers that would stop all of these worst case scenarios I was thinking of in my head. Um, and I think that stuck with me that it's not that you're not going to get challenges, you will get them. It's just more of how your attitude towards it is and also asking for help. And I think we're quite privileged to work in an industry where people have gone before us and people will be coming behind us. Hopefully lots more young ladies, young generation of people interested in STEM. And it's you need to keep learning. You need to be excited to learn, but most importantly, not be scared to ask questions. And it's better to ask, learn than just try and then not just waste your time, but it could actually have other consequences. So that teachable moment for me kind of stuck with me. And, and it's something I just try to inspire other graduates and younger persons to not be scared to fail and not be scared to ask questions. So any other thoughts on that? Like say, so for me, that kind of summarizes what I would say I would tell my younger self now, looking back. For yourselves, is there any nuggets of wisdom or reflections of your time now compared to where you were 10, 15, 20 years ago that you wish you would you had known then? Confidence. Definitely confidence. So not to let anybody tell me that I can't achieve if I have if I have the right blocks to achieve that they can't they tell me I can't achieve um, and I think if I was who I am today back then then th yeah that's the message I would send maintain your confidence if you're unsure ask don't be frightened to ask we all have to start somewhere accept your failures and don't let that damage your confidence going forward what about the rest of the ladies? I'll be interested to know. I'll be interested to know what else you think will be good to share to a younger version of yourself. Not that you're not young. <laughs> uh, I think that it's important if you've made a decision and suddenly five years, even two years down the road, you're like, oh, I think I've made the wrong decision. It's OK to change. It's OK to go down the path that you want to go down. And this industry is very accepting of that. Yeah. And everyone will help you along the way. 
I think what I would tell myself kind of goes in, in line with all three of you. Uh, confidence, no, keep on asking, and um, it's okay to, to uh, change after five years. The thing what I have to add to that is um, it's okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them. Um, it's kind of like what Einstein said, if you keep on doing the same thing over and over and expect the different results, then, well, that's what, uh, that's not good. But if you do something and it goes wrong and you learn from it, also by asking questions and having that confidence, then you can move on and you grow personally, professionally. Um, so yeah, there's, it's okay to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes as well. What yeah. about you, Sherlyn? Yeah, the, the one I'd probably um, sort of build on is what you said, Mariam, right? Many of the perceived challenges that we think of are um, a lot in our heads rather than real challenges. Um, so it's, it's really, I think, one is the confidence bit. Um, the other one is the curiosity and not being afraid to maybe make mistakes, fail or fall and rise up again. But it's also a recognition that we're not alone. There's a really good support mechanism, um, regardless of what whatever blockers we may have in our heads. I, I guess one of the traditional blockers about women getting into the field of, say, maths and sciences and engineering is about this whole, am I going into this um, big world of uh, Male, big sort of male-dominated world, and I'm going to be left alone or discriminated, etc. If you look at um, society now and the role of women, it has significantly changed. So it's it's not just about talk, but we have a lot of systems and structures in place to make the work environment significantly more inclusive. Even simple things like, of course, as women um, and as as you age like myself, <laughs> we have um, additional responsibilities to fulfill in terms of taking care of family and and, and, and children, etc. But if you look at the world now, um, in terms of avenues for flexible working, such that w women can really have that time and space to succeed both in caring for family and to also succeed in their careers. Um, all of those options are actually out there. You just need to grab them or ask for them and feel that, you know, you have the right talents um, to be able to ask for these uh, the, these kinds of things. And there is a huge sort of, sort of support network um, also, not just from the women's perspective, but um, the, the men in the industry are also starting to get more and more aware of um, what it means to actually work in a very diverse and inclusive uh, and kind of a kind of environment. So I think Again, it, it's really about confidence, um, being inquisitive, understanding what blockers you may have, and thinking through whether those are just th whether those are real blockers or they're just mental blockers. That in fact, um, there are support mechanisms to actually help um, take out some of those fears and perceived challenges. Excellent. Oh, wow, I feel like I've learned a few things actually myself listening to all of you. Um, anybody want to share any last thoughts or comments? So anybody that will be watching this uh, in whenever they do. Um, I think it's been really nice chatting with all of you. Um, I hope it was the same. I know I've learned a few things now about yourselves. Um, but yeah, thank you. and. Our names are with the organization, so if you want to reach out to any one of us, just just go through the organization, and we're more than happy to give our nuggets and help. <laughs> and our names are on there as well. <laughs> we are part of the support network now for all of these. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, yeah. Of women. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, and nice chatting with um, you, ladies. You too. Thank you. Same here. Thank you and Thank take you. care. Bye.